this is going to be an interactive session. Okay, so um, I'm going to probably ask you a lot more questions. I know you already have some questions for me. And um, I am not saying that I have all the answers to your questions. I probably don't, right? Because um, I don't think, I mean, I probably scratch the surface of gender because gender is a fairly big topic, right? And um, I would first like to try to go around the room maybe and uh, I may not remember all of your names, but I would like to kind of, if there was one thing you're looking forward to take away from this session, um, that is no by the end of the session, I would just like to know what that is. Is that okay? Yeah. Does that sound okay? Okay, shall we start from here? Um, my name's Ananya, and I hope to take away something about female Okay. Okay. Female inside Ananya, yeah? Okay. Uh, my name's Maya, and I hope to take away something about uh, domestic violence, but particularly in domestic violence marriage. Okay. Maya, did you say? Maya. Okay. So uh, my name is Jasmine, and I hope to take away like some of the causes of gender discrimination or abuse. Okay. Okay. There was domestic violence, and then there is um, discrimination. And then, you. Okay, your name again? Mira. Mira, okay. You? Okay. Girls' education, okay. Okay, one second, let me just pause there. If you've kind of heard the word before, you probably want to think of something new, right? Because then I do not want to make the entire lecture about domestic violence, right? Because I'm sure people have other questions. And feel free to ask me whatever it is you want to ask. And I probably won't know the answer to everything, right? But if something's striking you, just make sure that there's no wrong questions today, right? The more you ask, the more you learn, and there's nothing that you could ask me that I would think was a wrong or stupid question, okay? Because this is what I do for a living. This is exactly what I do. I go from place to place, and I have conversations with people about gender, about domestic violence, about all of those things that you're talking about, okay? So there's nothing that I'm going to think is wrong. Um, my name is Rowan, and I hope to take away and um, learn about more of the, the two genders in India based on the diversity. Okay. Uh, hi, my name's Will. I hope to take away something about maybe um, something just to have to do with in, in the city and urbanization. Urbanization and how it affects gender, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm Gigi and I hope to take something away from female offense. Okay. Um, my name is Sasha and I would like to throw your opinion on female offense. Okay. Uh, I'm Beatrice. I'd like to find out more about solutions to a lack of access to education for girls. Okay. Uh, my name is Sagar. Uh, I'd like to hear your opinion on the, some of the worst effects of child marriage. Child marriage, did you say? Okay. Okay, so access to education. We're getting some new things now. We're talking about child marriage. Okay. You know, most of these are problems, right? There's also like good things about gender. Does somebody want to find out something good about gender apart from the problems? Because that's allowed too. We don't want to just frip throughout the class. We can also celebrate, okay? Hi, my name is Keisha, and I just want to hear you talk about gender and a couple of things. Okay, th thank you for giving me a lot more room. Um, my name's Maya, and I hope to take away something about male dominance, especially in terms of sexual assault. Okay, okay, there we go. Another problem, <laughs> and a tough one at that, okay? Um, my name is Anushka, and I'd like to learn more about how cultural values are affecting girls' education. Okay, okay. And, um, you? Uh, my name is Mihek, and I want to know um, the causes of girls' education and how it affects their life. Okay. Um, my name is Lynn, and I'd like to find out more about um, the education of the hardcore girl. Specific? 
Okay, and th that's what I work though. I also work in Bihar, so I will be able to tell you something about that. Yeah. Uh, my name is Emma, and I want to know more about um, the cause and effects of the low fear of Okay, okay. Um, anything new that you guys want to hear about? Apart from education, apart from child marriage, apart from domestic violence, we've got all of that on the board. Yeah? Oh, okay, sex ratio. Um, from there, I am definitely interested in drawing you guys in this conversation, which, uh, by the way, gender is not just about women and girls, right? Right? So um, is there something you guys want to hear about boys, for instance? Something that you think that you would like to talk about? You want to know about girls. Okay, okay. That's something that I think your classmates can help you out with once I do you. But you don't necessarily need that information from me. But Okay, stop. Stop. 
Time's up. Two things, you've got it down. The first two things that came to your mind when you thought of the word woman, and the first two things that came to your mind when you thought of the word man. You have it, be confident, right? You know the best thing about this? You're now gonna pass it on to your neighbor, and you're never gonna have to read your own answers out, okay? Uh, when I say go, keep passing the chips to your right. One, two, three, go. Keep passing the chips to your right. 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 Okay, stop, stop. Stop, stop when everybody has a single piece of paper in their hand. I have nothing. I have nothing. Here, nothing. Just some people kind of like throw it around. I Each one of you have a sticky in your hand? Yes. Yeah? Yes? Okay. So, what we're going to do is. Can I use this part? Jesus. 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 We're going to block our problems. We're going to block out the world's problems for a while and just look at understanding what we mean when we say the word gender. Okay? First, we're going to look at the word gender and we're going to start from here this time, right? And look at your, when it's your turn, look into your paper and read out to me what the chit says for the word woman and what the chit says for the word man. Okay? Okay. Start with, what's your name? Okay. Uh, it says, for woman, it says young pretty. Okay, that's great. So there's young and there's pretty. Are the women happy? Okay. And for men? It says handsome and strong. <laughs> handsome. Strong. I'll tell you what, we made this easier. Can, um, can somebody, can I have a, can I have a girl step up, please? Okay, and you can, you will keep noting down what it is that the chit says about men, right? And can we have a boy come up front, please? Someone to volunteer from that side. Not a boy. Let me. Anybody can be a boy. I'm sorry. I shouldn't like. You my gender. Anyone. So I mean, you get to write out. Okay. Start. Okay. Next. Up. Right up. Strong. Sexual harassment for women. And education. Okay, and for men? I'll tell you what, you have to stand up and be a little louder so everybody can hear. Family and responsibilities. Family and responsibilities. Okay, next. For women, housework and marriage. Housework and marriage. For men? <coughs> for men, strong and Strong and employed. Okay, strong and employed. Okay, that's interesting. Next. Remember, we are not reading out what we wrote, right? I mean, each of you is reading out somebody else's chip. For a moment, it says widows and female. Widows and female. For a man. <laughs> For a man, it says male and working. Male and working. Okay, a lot, a lot in there about employment. The next. What's your name? Devon. do you have a chit on you? Ah, oh, that's it? Okay. And then man, did something come to the person's head about a man? Powerful. Powerful. Okay. Okay, that's great. Nothing on it about a woman or a man? Okay. Okay. Feminism? Yeah. Okay, awesome. And for a man? Okay. It just says girls and moms. Girls and moms. Okay. 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 Okay.
girls and moms. I, is that the man one or the woman one? We'll never know. I'm gonna guess it's the woman one. Um, for women, it says fabulous and powerful. Fabulous and powerful for a woman. And then for men, it just says strong. So we've already got strong down there, so you can maybe underline strong. Okay. Um, for a woman, it says rights and education. Rights and education. And then for men, it says powerful and strong. Powerful and strong. strong. We're going strong again. You want to make them bigger? Maybe? <laughs> okay. Oh, um, for women, it says quiet and less recognized. Quiet and less recognized. And for men, it says strong and powerful. Strong and powerful. Again, I'm surprised. Uh, for a woman, it says empowerment and underrated. And for a man, it says independent and strong. There we go again. Okay. It just says mom and sister. For mom and sister. <laughs> and for, um, for men, it says dad, uncle. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's almost cheating. Dad and uncle. Okay. Yes. Um, for women, it says feminism and devalued. Diva? Uh, no, devalued. Oh, okay, devalued. And then for men, it says rapist and priority. <laughs> rapist and priority. Priority. Okay. No. Okay, remember, again, remember, it is not, I mean, the person that's reading out the chat didn't necessarily write it. Okay. For women, it says underestimated and smart. Underestimated and smart. Says strong and masculine. Strong, big surprise there, and masculine. Mm -hmm. uh, for women, it says right and unfair treatment. Right and unfair treatment. Right. Right. Rights and unfair right. treatment. Okay. And for men, it says power and guy. Power and guy. <laughs> guy. <laughs> guy is a. Negative stuff. It says that women 
have been ill-treated, uh, women are underestimated, they are devalued, um, they are underrated, they're less recognized, and there's unfair treatment out there. Um, for men, we have um, strong, strong again, strong again, there's a lot of strong in there, I lost track, and then there was a lot of powerful as well. Uh, responsibility, employed, priority, male, dad, rapist, guy, uncle, masculine, brotherhood, boys, male, unfair, tall, and shoes. Okay. Um, what do you guys think? Do, you, um, do, do each and every one of you agree to all of the adjectives that have been put down on either side? No. No, you have different perspectives on this, right? Okay. So let's quickly look at woman then. With woman, um, if I were to change woman out here to man, okay, and if I were to change man to woman, now let's look at all the adjectives once again and see if the adjectives still hold good, okay, if they still make sense. Shall we do that? Yeah? Okay. So. Man and ill-treated. Does that sound okay? No. Does that work? So maybe we'll put our hands up and um, one of you could explain to me if you think ill-treated and man go work. You're already talking. You're just supposed to be putting your hands up. Um, you can tell me. I would say that it can still work. I mean, we would often think like the women like, like sexism and that's a thing, but I think we also need to consider that men aren't excluded from everything. It's not like they get to sit on a throne all the time, you know, they still live a life. So that they can still be discriminated against for other things. What's your name? Beatrice. Okay. So uh, Beatrice says that maybe what we do hear about is a lot more about women being ill-treated. Maybe that's what we see more of, more of or hear more about. But that doesn't mean that men are never ill-treated. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Does that mean it makes sense? It's, it's fair. It's only fair that we don't know the world of men. We don't know everybody. We don't know how all men are treated. And maybe some of them aren't treated well. And is that a possibility? Mm -hmm. Right, that's a possibility. Uh, don't the boys in your class get punished too? Yeah. Well, they do. Uh, uh, have you ever seen maybe a friend or a brother cry? because they feel like they've been treated unfairly, right? So, I mean, it's a possibility. So, ill-treated can be an adjective for a man. Let's leave that. Uh, fabulous. Can men be fabulous? Yes. yes. Yeah? Yes? Okay, so let's leave fabulous. Men can be fabulous, and men have said that they are fabulous indeed. Okay, powerful? Does powerful work for a man? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. Does a quiet work for a man? Sometimes. Yeah, those three men out there are being awfully quiet today, right? Quiet definitely works for a man. Um, does young work for a man? Yes. It does, right? Okay. Does pretty work for a man? Yes. Do we, do we see pretty men? Yes. Yeah, some people say Justin Bieber's pretty. No. No. No, but some people do. I know tons. Oh, but okay, so pretty men is a thing. Yeah. We do see free men once in a while. Yeah? Uh, rights. Yeah. Men have rights. Yeah. Some would say men have more rights than women. Yeah. Um, so rights work. Underestimated? Yeah. Can a man be underestimated? Yeah. Are men sometimes underestimated by their own parents sometimes? By teachers sometimes? By friends sometimes? Right? Um, underestimated work. Dresses. Yes. 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 Dresses goes with men, yes. right? Yes. Okay. So uh, when we say dresses, do we mean um, gowns or maxis or like? No. I mean, they both work. They both work for men. They both work. Yeah. That a dress would work for a man too, right? Yeah. I'm talking about nice, frilly, long dress. That would still work. Yeah. Are we all positive about this? Yeah. <laughs> right. What about the What about the boys there? Do you think that men and dresses work? Yeah? As an objective? Do we see men wearing dresses though? Yes. Yes. Yeah? So those who have seen men wearing dresses, maybe you raise your hands. And then maybe I ask uh, you. Um, so you're okay with that, right? You're okay with dresses being on that side of the board? Yes. Uh, why? So you 
because um, some people have like different beliefs and like um, they're not all like men act like the same way and maybe like some men like want to act like a girl and they shouldn't be discriminated against because of their belief. Okay. okay, so some men do wear dresses, right? Okay, there's a little bit of a confusion there, but I'm gonna take it anyway. Okay, there's a bigger tick mark there because there's a bigger, yes, some men do wear dresses, but we will come back to that question, okay? Moms. No. 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 Yes. 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 How, many of you, how many of you think moms works for men? Raise your hands. I no, 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 I, I, I didn't ask you. I'm not, I'm not qualifying this. I'm just saying, does mom work for men? Can men be moms? Yes. Biologically, yes. no, but like. Okay, uh, No, your John wants to tell me something. John, you tell us. <laughs> Transgender. Okay. So now we're talking about a gender that we haven't been speaking about so far. Right? Let's park them in the center of the board. Right? That's a different gender. Yeah? But for man, does mom work? No. Yes. No. It depends on the Okay, so why don't you, um, I forgot, Devon? Gigi, sorry. Somebody else is Devon. Uh, yeah. Moms aren't supposed to be like, you know, females. So Gigi says typically moms are usually female. Uh, well, I mean, I feel like you. Then a male could be a mom, it depends on your beliefs around like the word mom. For example, what we wrote on the board for a female, mm -hmm. what we wrote on the board for a man. But by, like, biologically, as in like birth and stuff, that would be incorrect. It depends on how you look at them. Great, okay, so let's divide mom into two parts. If we would look at mom as a role, we are saying that men could very well fulfill this role. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. The role of a mom, a man could be. The things that a mom does, a man could do. Right? But if we were to look at the mom biologically, that is, can a man give birth, we might be stuck here, a little confused, because that is not usually possible. Right? Okay? So I'm going to take role. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, but Keisha really wants to say something. Yes? No, I'm just, it's like the difference between like mom and mother. Like you're like, like a man can't be a mother, but they can still be your mom. Oh, okay. So Keisha's making a little kind of a clarification there. He's saying not all moms are mothers. Maybe mother is the biological term for it. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Okay. I'm going to park that. I'm going to park that. I'm going to have to keep, keep moving. But I have ticked the role. The role part of it makes everybody satisfied that a, a man can feel, fulfill the role of a mom. We've heard of single parents, right? Yeah. Single parents where... The father is probably the mother too in that point, right? Or the mom too. Um, has to take care of the food, has to take care of the health of the child. So that is a thing. So we believe that, okay? Uh, pretty, we've done marriage. Uh, yeah, right? Uh, underrated. Yeah, yeah. Just a lot like unfair treatment, ill treated, all of that stuff, right? Widows. No, no. no. You cannot argue. <laughs> okay, okay, but, okay, females. Females. Can a man be a female? But then they're a female. So they're not a man. No, but then they're not a man. But he can change to a female. Okay. But, but then they're not a man. Like, something you can't. Yeah, so I'm gonna come, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with hand then. Yeah. Thank you, Sasha. You were saying something similar. Okay. Okay. Um, let's recognize this a lot like underrated. Smart. Yeah. 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 Feminism. Yeah. 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 A man can be a feminist. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, lady. Yeah. A man can be ladylike. Yeah. So if we were to break down lady into graceful, into polite, well-mannered, and things that the term lady comes with, a man can fulfill those roles, yes? Yes. Yes. What do you guys think? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take that. Okay, now we're gonna quickly move this side. Similarly, can a woman be handsome? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Can she be strong? Yes. Yes. Uh, can she be male? Similar kind of a technically maybe.
maybe not, but um, like a male, she can be. Um, working? Yes. <coughs> Brotherhood? Yes. Can a woman be a bro? Yes. <laughs> she can. Yeah. She can be a part of the, you know, she can be one of the bros. Yeah, that works. Okay. Boys? <coughs> not so sure. Dad? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The same way. Roll the same way, right? Okay. okay. Uncle? Then they're both long. Yeah. 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 So we kind of like argue. Okay. okay. So family, responsibility, all of this stuff, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, what is this? Guy. Oh, yeah, similar to bro. Or, uh, yeah, masculine? Yes. yes. Yes? Masculine is yes? Okay. Uh, rapist? Yes. Yes? yes. yes. If rapist was a, was a behavior thing, a woman could be a rapist, right? Yeah. Okay, employed? Yeah. Yes. Okay, better treated? Yes. Yes. How do you guys feel about better treated? Can a woman be better treated than men? Yeah, like the queen yes. of England. Yeah, does that happen? Yeah. <laughs> that happens, right? Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. You want a case you want to say something? Sorry. It's just, it's like the difference between like, like, um, like man as a gender versus a specific man. Like, like specifically women, like, like, uh, might be better treated, but as a, like a gender compared to men, they're not. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, yeah, I'm gonna come back to this one too, okay? I'm gonna come back to this one too. So wait, we've basically been through all of this, and so now, if we were to define gender, is this a gender? Is man a gender? Yeah. Yeah. Man is a gender, no. right? And when I, man is not a gender? No, it could be. Okay, so that's another question, right? That we'll take on board. We'll take that on board. We'll take that on board, and that's my phone, and you should ignore it. I forgot to silence it. But um, yeah, sure. So um, I'm going to use these words that you described, right, to explain to you what all of these words that you guys are using interchangeably mean, right? Sex, gender, gender identity, all of that stuff, right? Let's talk a little bit about what that really means. Um, okay, so when we came to, if I were, now let's just imagine, if I were to take this exercise to a different classroom, maybe in Bihar, right, because Bihar came up, because you guys said it a couple of times, Bihar, you know, is a, is a state in northern India, right, yeah, if I were to take this exercise, and I do take this exercise often, to a classroom in Bihar, would my, the answers to the questions that I asked you, Right? The words that you wrote on the chair, would it be different? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would it be different? Yeah. Yeah. Would this activity or game have worked out differently in Bihar? Yeah. No. Yes. Then from the American Embassy School here in Chanakipuri? Yes. Yeah. Would it have been slightly different? How could it have been different? Yeah. I think their thoughts would not be so open. Like, cause the, I know that What's your name? Ivanka. Ivanka. No, Ivanka. Ivanka. Yeah. Okay. Ivanka, did you think that the uh, thoughts for uh, the you know remember the word man here was was here right? It was man written here. Yeah. Did you think that these words were very open? Did yeah. you think that the idea of man was really open when we started this exercise? No, but they're kind of conservative. Like the children, they've been brought, they've been brought up in a kind of conservative environment, so I feel like that's going to change. Okay. Everybody has different beliefs. Like adding on to what Noah said, it's um, really comes from a place that, like, you like you come from, where like you were surrounded by people who believe a certain thing. Whereas we from, we're international kids from different places, and we take beliefs or traditions from other places, and we bring them here, which changes our mindset. Mm. Whereas these kids are usually exposed to a certain type of mindset from the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah, mostly because it depends on how developed that place is, or how like not open, but like where people are coming from. Yeah. Okay. So um, all of these are right answers, right? But I just want you to start thinking that the, so um, in, a, in a way, when I said, if you can think of two things, the, the two words that come to your mind immediately when I say the word man, what you put down is maybe not even what you believe. Do you know what I mean? The people that put down strong and powerful probably don't think that that's all men are, right? I, it's because I gave you only two words that they put down strong and powerful. 
But they probably also know that there are men who are not strong and powerful. They also know that there are men who are ladylike, who are graceful. They also know there are men that wear dresses. They also know that there are men who wear dresses who are awfully strong. Does this make sense? Do you get what I mean? Right? But it's because I gave you two words that you were limited to two words and therefore perhaps those two words that one of you chose was strong and powerful. Right? And yes, it's right that it, with every kind of context that is in this classroom, this is what came to your mind when I said the word woman. In this classroom, this is what came into your mind when I said the word man. But in any other classroom, in any other state, the definition of this gender and man and woman are two terminologies that we use to describe the gender identity of someone. Okay? So man and woman are two terms that we use to define the gender identities of someone. And what is gender? Gender doesn't depend on your body, bodily anatomy. Gender doesn't depend on your biology. Gender is something that is constructed socially, right, by you and I. By this, I mean, this moment in time. There are these people sitting in this room and you thought that a woman might look like this and that a man might look like this in Bihar their idea of a man and woman can be completely different in Uttar Pradesh their idea of a man and woman can be completely different what is gender then? gender is something that is constructed by society around you and your idea or understanding of a man and a woman comes very much from what you see every day right? that's why it would be different in Bihar it may be very open, it may be very close, but it really comes from what you see every day. Your own idea of gender has become bigger since you moved from wherever it is and came to India. Right? Because now you're seeing different kinds of men and different kinds of women, you know, in comparison to what you used to see when you were probably younger. Right? And as you keep moving, your idea of man and woman will keep changing. It is constantly in flux. It's not static. The idea of man and woman is not static. The idea of gender and gender as a concept is not static. It will keep changing. Tomorrow if you move to a different country, you will see different kinds of men and women. For instance, in Scotland, the kilt is something that a man wears, right? Do you know what a kilt is, right? Mm -hmm. Right? The skirt like thing. Or maybe in Scotland, in a school where young people are used to that kind of culture, right? A skirt would not be something that they would only put under woman. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Right? In the olden days when heels first came about, everybody wore heels. Right? Man and women. In order to seem taller. Rulers, emperors, kings wore heels. Right? And heels didn't depend on whether or not the woman was biologically female. It was worn by anybody to seem taller. But today, Typically, you would see more women than men wear heels. Is that true? Do you know what I mean? Right? And then, interestingly, you guys introduced the term trans. Transgender. Is transgender someone's gender? It is. It's right in the term, right? Transgender is also a gender terminology. What does transgender mean? Yeah. You would identify as both. You would identify as both. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Nobody knew what transgender meant, but they know what it doesn't mean. That's not fair. Uh, you, okay, I'm going to take that on board. Um, it means you were born biologically as one sex, but you your, gender your gender identity is different from the one sex that you were Okay, okay. So you would say, okay. So what's your name? Ananya. Ananya, Ananya uh, said something that is uh, super true. When you're born, what's your sex? Your sex is what's on your birth certificate, right? So sex is something that's defined by your genitals. Does that make sense? Your genitals, right? If you have a penis, the doctor is most probably going to say that this baby's sex is male. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if, if the baby is born with a vagina, the doctor is most probably going to say that this baby's sex is female, right? 
and that is the sex assigned to a baby at birth and that's all sex is right now after that as the baby grows up or as you grow up you are constantly making decisions as to what to wear what to i mean how to behave how to walk who to be friends with and all of those things are decisions made by me but are they made only by me no they're also made by parenting right they're also made by teachers they're also made by the people around me who tell me what i can eat what i can wear who i can be friends with yes that makes sense right and all of that is the process of socialization yeah because of which you gain or you assume a gender identity does that make sense right right that is gender identity and um on this note to perhaps better understand what trans looks like a trans person is someone that is born with a certain sex but then grows up in an environment and realizes that the things that they're being told because socialization what does it do it makes these boxes of man and woman and it tells you that that's probably you if you are male should probably be inside the man box and if you're female you should probably be inside the woman box and if you were to break this box like we just did is it easy to break that box no is it easy to get out of that box is it easy for that man to wear a dress is it easy for women women to uh, wear whatever they want to wear is it easy for women to wear whatever they want to wear What do you guys think? Yeah, what, what do you say? I just think it's probably if a man wears a dress, some people say, "Oh, that's kind of weird." If a woman wears a dress, it's like, "Oh, that's fine." Or if a woman wears something that is a T-shirt that says, "Oh, it's for men," you know, it, nobody really cares. Well, it also depends on like what they're wearing. Because like typically, there's negative like social feedback if a woman wears something more revealing, but and also there's negative social feedback for men that wears something more feminine. Okay, so that's interesting. There you're not even talking about. You're saying if the woman was to dress just like a woman, but if she wore something that was maybe shorter, that showed more off more of her body, then she would get a lot of negative feedback. Very similar to if a man were to just wear female clothes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So then then we realize that through this process of socialization, yeah, there are punishments and rewards given to people. Right? If a little girl wears a pretty dress, what is she told? You look pretty. Yeah, she's told that she looks pretty. She's probably uh, given chocolates. She's probably treated very well, and that is a way of letting a younger girl know that that's probably what she should be wearing. Does that make sense? Right? Yeah, because you are constantly reacting to that in a positive way. Her society around her is reacting to that in a positive way. and that tells her that that's a good thing to do that box is a good box to occupy does that make sense and as a woman as a little boy grows older if he were to wear a little skirt and walk around what would possibly happen he would be made fun of people would constantly keep calling him a girl a people would be confused because of which the little boy probably would become uncomfortable right and that is in a way society telling him that that's probably what you shouldn't be doing that's a bad thing to do does that make sense right and sometimes the rewards and the punishments they get worse they get really bad right as you grow older the more men try to break out of so now we're learning now we're looking at two things so these boxes that we're talking about the boxes of socialization right man woman the boxes of socialization that society makes this is what you would call gender norms does that make sense this is what you would call gender norms they're set by society they're hard to break but they're easier for some people depending on where you are right depending on how much visibility transgender people have in a certain country there is more freedom for women to look 
more like a man or behave more like a man or a man to behave more like a woman or wear clothes like a woman. Does that make sense? It also depends on where you are. It depends on what period it is. Maybe 10 years ago, it would have been harder. Today, because there is a lot more awareness around the world, it's probably going to be easier. Does that make sense? So it also depends on the time. It depends on the place. It depends on all of these things, right? And so today, perhaps this box is slightly bigger. Today, perhaps men can do things that they couldn't do 10 years ago. Today, perhaps women can do things that they couldn't do 10 years ago. Today, perhaps women can wear little dresses and if somebody made fun of them, they could complain to somebody. They could tell the cops that they're feeling uncomfortable and that this person is harassing me. Is that, is that true? But 10 years ago, I don't know about where each of you is from, but in India, that would have been a little hard. That wouldn't have been that easy. But it's also because the world is changing, the world is becoming more aware, and the world realizes that maybe these two boxes are not the best way to live. In a, in a world that has a lot of place for everybody, for different kinds of people, there is no need to make two little boxes and try to push the entire world into those. Does that make sense? Because then where would trans people go? Because transgender is something that typically breaks these two boxes, right? Because a trans person is somebody that is at birth assigned perhaps the sex female, but grows up and says, I don't even, I don't even think I'm a woman. I actually think I'm a man and then breaks the box entirely, breaks the female box entirely and walks into this one, right? And that's exactly why trans people are called transgender because they transgress. Does that make sense? They break the box and they walk into other boxes. They are transgressing. They're transgressing what? They're transgress transgressing gender norms. Does that make sense? Or is this all too... Yeah? Does anybody have any questions at this point? So we know what gender norms are, we know what sex is, we know what gender identity is. Gender identity is when, so how, how, how do we, how does one know what the other person's gender identity is? Yeah, sometimes you don't really know, but also, how do you show somebody what your gender identity is? Sometimes people do. Sometimes people dress deliberately to show off their gender identity. Yeah, but then other times people still identify as one Then they don't, yeah. That's true. That's true. But either way, gender is a performance, right? Either way, because that's how we operate in a society where people are curious. People are going to want to use a pronoun. People are going to want to call you, introduce you to other people. They want to find out what your gender is, right? Okay, so I'm going to stop the entire thing on gender here and look very quickly at the problems that you guys highlighted, right? Okay, um, what is female infanticide? Does anybody have a clue as to what female infanticide is? Okay. It's the killing of female babies that comes about for multiple reasons, but generally because um, the daughter is wanted. Okay. Okay? 
and the fetus doesn't, I mean, the fetus acquires the sex over a period of time, right? Because the fetus is in the uterus for how long? Nine months, Nine months right? And it acquires the sex over a period of time, depending on the development of the fetus. And the minute the sex is acquired, and the sex is usually acquired around the second trimester. Trimester, if there's nine months, there's, okay. This, this is the gestation period. This is gestation, yeah. This is nine months, right? One, two, three, first trimester. Four, five, six, second trimester. Eight and uh, seven, eight and nine, third trimester. Does that make sense? Right? And around the second trimester is when the fetus starts acquiring a sex. That is, its genitals start developing, yeah? Its hormones start developing. And it's around this time that if I were to get an ultrasound done, the mother was to get an ultrasound done, you would know what the sex of the fetus is. And if the sex of the fetus points, to the fact that the fetus is in fact female, then there is a tendency in India, a very high tendency in India to get rid of the fetus or to terminate the pregnancy altogether or get what is known as an abortion. Is everybody clear with that term? Everybody knows that term? Yeah. yeah? Yes. Okay. And this in India, it, is, is, is an abortion legal in India? Yes. Yes, abortion is legal in India, but sex determination is not, right? Um, and who is at fault if sex determination is accessed? The doctor. The doctor um, and? The parents. And? Anyone who is responsible. So anyone who is responsible for the termination of the is anyone that was involved in the idea of getting rid of it. So the doctor would be agreeing with the patient, the patient is the one that wants it terminated, but the patient might also have pressure from everyone around them. Yeah, okay. So when it comes to when it comes to feticide, yes, you're right, the doctor is liable in the court of law over the patient because the doctor is the one that can deny the surgery, right? Deny the abortion. The doctor knows that it's wrong. And we know that the woman who is opting for the abortion probably is opting for it because of all of the pressure back at home, right? So the blame doesn't fall on the woman, but more so on the doctor. Socially, the blame falls on the woman, even if it remains that perhaps her husband and her husband's family was the one pressuring her into getting an abortion after sex determination. But abortion, to get an abortion in India is absolutely okay under five conditions. Do you know what the five conditions are? I think it's a lot of information. So we don't have to go into the five conditions. But for certain conditions, it is okay to get an abortion in India. Yeah? But female feticide happens simply because, yes, one of the major problems is that if I were to go ahead and have this female child, right, is the country as it exists today going to make it easy for me to bring up this child? That's the question that we got to think about before we make a judgment about the family that's opting for an abortion after sex determination. What we really need to ask ourselves is, okay, they can go ahead and have a female child, but is the world that we live in today, especially in India, maybe in a place like Bihar, a good place for the girl? Is it easy for this family to bring up that girl child? or not, right? And then we start thinking about who it is we blame. Who are the different people we blame? How much blame do we attribute to which actors? And these are all important questions to think about because it's not easy to answer any of these questions. And it really depends on the social status of the family, how much money they have, how much education, what is the educational literacy level in that family, right? All of these things are important things to think about. Because as that girl grows up in that family, in that context, she's probably going to find it hard to access education, right? And even when she accesses education, how many of you in this classroom um, 
have received comprehensive sexuality education. I'm hoping the American Embassy um, has given you information. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? And comprehensive sexuality education is something that is still not mandatory across India. Everybody in India doesn't get comprehensive sexuality education. Everybody in India doesn't even, many of them, many young girls that I work with do not know what their period is until they get it. Right? Until they get their period, they have no clue what a period is. Right? And when they get their period, then you can imagine the kind of fear inside that girl when she suddenly realizes that she's bleeding. Right? So comprehensive sexuality education is something that is inaccessible to most people in India. It's not even mandated by the law yet, right? So in this kind of an environment, is it so easy to just say, oh, maybe the family is to blame. Look at those ogres. They went and aborted the female um, fetus. Does that make sense, right? So uh, you know, blaming people is hard. Uh, why does domestic violence happen? Why do you think domestic violence happens? What is domestic violence? What is violence? What is violence?